406 Masters on Film is produced by the Bozeman Art Museum to recognize and document the visual artists that live in Big Sky Country. Painters, sculptors, potters, printmakers, glass artists, photographers, all influenced by the beauty of Montana and the wonderful people that live here. I'm Beth Ann Kennedy. Thank you for joining us. A good piece of wood is always inspirational to me because there's possibilities there that I haven't really even tried yet. I'm inspired by piles of things. <laughs> I go walking around my junkyard and I get wiggly fingers and piles of sticks. I guess both of us have very small realms that, that we find satisfying. To someone else, it might seem maybe not that interesting. For me, I'm very involved in the details, I guess you would say, in the feeling of it. Today, we have the opportunity of sitting with Deborah Butterfield and John Buck on their property in Bozeman, Montana, a place they have called home for 43 years. It's here that they raised their two sons. They filled their hearts with the great outdoors. They worked with lots of horses and they created the art that has thrilled and inspired people around the world. Buck Butterfield, a relationship of over half a century, a marriage of 48 years, a partnership, an art-filled partnership. Welcome. I'm just doing horses, right? But still, it's terrifying. What am I going to do when I go in my studio? I mean, it's like having a horse as a rectangular canvas for me. I still don't know what I'm going to fill that canvas with. But for other people, it might seem like, oh, it's simple. She makes horses. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're just more sensitive to the possibilities within one one direction. I'm a little bit like the old classic kind of guy who looks at a piece of wood and sees something in it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and you can kind of go with that, but uh, that isn't exactly how I work. Uh, my work uh, comes from assembled material. You know, I've, I put pieces of wood together so I can carve it, you know, and so I, I saw it out in some basic shapes and then I start carving that. Uh, I don't start with a tree, I start with lumber which is easier to glue together and make flat, so forth. And then sometimes he'll carve a tree out of that. <laughs> yeah, I'll carve a tree <laughs> out of that. I think the work always has that bit of a, well, irony and humor. Like his prints, you know, there's this image that's usually really beautiful, but then the drawing in the background of it is often very harsh or scary or funny. There's always these layers of perception so it kind of draws you in with its beauty and its color and then then you kind of look closer and you get the more the deeper meaning of it so he plays that way with the humor and with the irony I think that's the thing is that and the same with the horses they're not just horses it's like blood and guts you know horses die they break their legs there's so much love there but it's also very serious. And so I think humor and joy, you can only appreciate the fullness of that by having the opposite and that there is that, that balance in life. And so I think we're both treading on that, you know, the joyful moments, but with the, the dark shadow of uh, how transient we are. I wanted to be with Debbie. She knew this and she wanted to come out and see Montana. And when she got out here, she just sort of fell in love with it. Everybody has a horse, live out in the country. There's a university so she could teach here. It was sort of like, 
God, we don't really have to go anywhere else. We've got an airport here. We've got a university. <laughs> and there's a lot of other artists around. And it's peaceful. So let's try this. And lo and behold, we had two kids. And we've satisfied a lot of domestic things. And we just put our nose to the grindstone and made art. That's maybe one of the reasons why it's so comfortable to live in Montana. Because there's not quite so many people here doing art like you would be in New York. And here it's more of a, a meditative kind of uh, atmosphere where you can be out by yourself and make work and then maybe go off and, and kind of compare notes with the people around that are interested in such things. That's what drove us here is that it was a mutual practice. Everybody was was in their studios and it was just exciting to be around one another. Yeah, I think the people here were people who were very committed to their artwork and they they really worked. They worked all the time. They produced a lot of work, which you could see connections between their work and places outside of Montana. But they were in love with Montana and they would go to the ends of the earth to see the work of another person who's from Montana if they were having an exhibition somewhere. And so that's really, I think, what drove us more than the end product. It's made us love it here, so it's home. We are storytellers because, you know, listening to Debbie is always convoluted sort of trip about <laughs> her horses <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's some really nice connections that are that she makes but john's work he he often has a political theme you know he'll start with a like with his prints particularly or the big sculptures he'll have a historical or recent political theme and mine becomes more what's going on with the materials, it's more process-based. And so by interacting with the materials, the materials themselves are the narrative, whether it's steel that's been crushed or rusted, or the sticks that they've been in a flood or you know, grown quickly or burned. And so when I'm assembling these materials, the narrative kind of presents itself. And I, I think of the horse as having the narrative inside the body. So it's like a painting that's controlling this rather abstract construction, but somehow it begins to tell me who it is. And then I can personify it by putting the neck on and the head because it's, it's not something I know I'm gonna do, but working with wood the way John does, he really has to know what he's going to do. So we're kind of coming to the same place, but from different starting points. Well, I only know what I'm going to do after I've started it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's then it's the same. <laughs> There's always this sort of fear of flying, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you just have to get in there and, and, and sort of pitch. Flailing around is an important part of it and faking it, you know, you're like, I don't know, I'm just going to start. Or even if you just sweep your floor, it's enough to get you kind of warmed up and in your studio. And something will happen. And basically something has to happen so that you can respond to it. And I think that so much of making art is just the practice of it. felt like I couldn't make art out of sticks because Jackie Windsor was doing sticks. This was in the 70s. And finally, I just realized that I really wanted to work with sticks and I was just gonna have to do it. So then she felt like she could cast this work in bronze. She just refined what she was doing until it became just natural. And like John, I think we both our similarities are that we do additive sculpture, like gluing the wood together. I put the sticks or the steel on, but then you edit. You take a cutting torch or you a saw, 
um, and take it off or you carve it. And so it's this, this uh, positive and negative experience of, of adding and subtracting. There's too much beautiful things around me, interesting people that are out there and that I think maybe if you're, there's such a thing as success, success is being able to do what you want to do, make your art and get to know a lot of other interesting people. I think of, of going in the studio is like riding a horse. You know, you go in and there is a, a problem or a, a question that you want to answer and it, go, it can go really wrong. You know, you get the wrong answer, things don't go well, but you always have to end on this note where there's some sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. And so I think that that is, it's got to be um, nurturing to yourself. It has to be something that, that gives you strength and meaning. But I think the one thing about art is that it helps you to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. When you see a movie or you read a book, you end up identifying with a person that's so different than you that you can't imagine what it would be like to be them, but you get a glimpse of what it might be like to be someone else. And I think even in abstract work, there's this space in it that allows you to come in and enter that, like the quiet. And that's how f I feel about my work. I hope that uh, people will almost crawl inside and, and like look out through the horse, that you experience it internally, but not as an observer, but that you become part of that energy. And I think developing empathy is the one thing that can justify making art, that you try to encourage people to feel things in a non-linear way, in a different way. I don't know, we've managed to get along. Um, you know, Terry Allen wrote a song, The 30 Year War Waltz. <laughs> That's kind of what it is, you know, you, you have, it's like a tide, it comes in and it goes, but I think that we are doing our work, uh, that this is our, you know, we stop in in each other's studio and it's, I don't know, it's just life. Party <laughs> on. <laughs>